Hi, it's Katrina. The Man Pupuner Giants. The Man Pupuner stone giants can be found in the northern Ural Mountains of Russia. There are a total of seven rock pillars here, standing between 90 and 130 feet tall. Each one almost looks like an idol, or like a giant frozen in a prison of rock. They are standing on top of a hill with incredible views of the surrounding wilderness in one of the most isolated places on the planet. This isn't somewhere you can just get on a plane and fly to. Even for Russians, it's quite the journey just to reach this place. So what is the mystery of the stone giants? Legend has it that underneath the rough rock facade is the flesh and blood of seven preserved giants. The hill was supposedly sacred ground centuries ago, a place none of the indigenous locals were allowed to go. And then one day, a group of seven giants came from a faraway land to destroy the local Mansi people. That as soon as the giants entered the sacred ground, they were petrified in stone by the mighty gods. And there they have stood ever since, encased in rock like they lost a battle with Medusa. Some believe there really are physical giants underneath these stone pillars, while scientists say it's just an old legend. The Veil of Veronica The Veil of Veronica is a holy relic science doesn't have an explanation for. The veil allegedly shows the face of Jesus, which was imprinted in the cloth prior to his crucifixion. In Roman Catholicism, it was Saint Veronica who encountered Jesus as he was going to Jerusalem. He was sweaty and exhausted, and Veronica stopped to wipe the sweat from his face with her veil, and when she did that, the image of his face rubbed off on the cloth. Following the crucifixion and resurrection, Veronica traveled to Rome and presented her veil to Emperor Tiberius. It soon became clear that the veil had supernatural powers. It was able to quench a man's thirst no matter how dry his mouth. It could cure the blind and on occasion even raise the dead. But here's the deal about that story. It doesn't appear in the Bible and it's not discussed at all until the Middle Ages. This has led most scientists to speculate the veil doesn't exist. They say it's not a historical story, but one that was made up over the centuries. That didn't stop Pope Innocent III from displaying the supposed veil of Veronica in public in 1297. It became a wonder of the city, one of the great artifacts visited by pilgrims in Rome. It was gawked over for the next 200 years before the sack of Rome in 1527, after which it was officially deemed destroyed. The Secret Sphinx Scientists have never been able to get to the bottom of the Sphinx, specifically how the Sphinx was made and what mysterious treasures are hiding inside or beneath it. In 1798, Vivant Denon visited the Sphinx and made a sketch that would go down in history. He drew a group of what appeared to be archaeologists climbing out from a secret door on the Sphinx's head. And although a sketch definitely isn't proof of there being a hole in the head of the Sphinx, there is other supporting evidence. There is an aerial photo from the 1920s taken from a hot air balloon which shows an opening at the top of the monument's head. And then there's the building materials to think about. If you've ever really looked at the Sphinx, you'll notice the body is significantly more eroded and damaged than its head. Some have attributed this to floodwaters, others say it's because of the construction material. The Sphinx's head is a totally different color because it may not have been built using the same rock. Instead of limestone, the head appears to have been built by a man-made substance. Sadly, we've never seen official proof of a secret layer underneath the Sphinx. No mainstream archaeologists have ever admitted that there's a hole in its head. Either there's a big cover-up or scientists are truly stumped. The Beale Ciphers the Beale Ciphers is the most mysterious code in American history. The story takes us back to 1898. A medium who claimed he could see into the past through his mysterious crystal ball looked back 79 years earlier, at 1819. The orb took the medium to the bedroom of Pascal Buford's tavern, where a man named Thomas Beale was fussing with bags of treasure. Thomas had diamonds, rubies, emeralds, and gold. Those in the room with the medium were Clayton and George Hart. They knew of Thomas Beale's legend and wanted specific details so they could track down the treasure he supposedly buried in the hills. According to the legend, 
Thomas Beale stashed his secret treasure somewhere in Virginia around the year 1820. He gave a box to a local innkeeper named Robert Morris, then vanished. The box allegedly contained encrypted messages on where to find the treasure. One of the cipher texts detailed the location, the second detailed the content of the treasure, and the third the owner of the treasure and their next of kin. The innkeeper opened the box 23 years later, then handed the cipher text to a friend before he passed away. That friend spent the next 20 years trying to decode the text, but failed. In the 1880s, the messages made it into a pamphlet, and that was what led Clayton and George Hart to a medium. But Clayton and George never found any buried treasure. Nobody knows where Thomas supposedly got his chest of jewels either, which was worth an estimated $43 million. As for the cipher texts, only one has been decoded, the one detailing the contents of the treasure. Scientists still can't break the first code to get its location, or the third code to find out who it belonged to. Do you think the treasure will ever be found? Or any theories on how to find it? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. The Dinosaur of Ta Prom Dinosaurs went extinct 65 million years ago, but there are some who believe not every single dinosaur was lost. There has been speculation through the years that some dinosaurs made it all the way until very recently, even living alongside humans. There are supposedly dinosaurs lost in the jungles of the Democratic Republic of the Congo. There are rumors that the Loch Ness Monster is really a leftover dinosaur. And finally, there's a very strange piece of artwork at a temple in Cambodia of a Stegosaurus. It's located in Ta Pram, and it's one of the famous temples in the former Khmer capital of Angkor. The temple was built by the great Khmer king Jaya Varman VII between 1181 and 1218 AD as a Buddhist monastery. But when the Khmer Empire collapsed shortly after, the city and the temple were abandoned forever. It wasn't discovered again until the 19th century, when modern excavations began at the site of Angkor. The temple is in shambles. Huge trees are growing through the stone, there are roots twisting and turning across the rough earthen floor, and finally there is an engraving of a stegosaurus on the wall of the temple. The creature bears an uncanny resemblance to a stegosaurus at least. The dinosaur with bony plates jutting from its back you might recognize in the Jurassic Park movies. Scientists don't have any real explanation for this. Some have suggested the Khmer had managed to tame a remaining group of stegosaurus in the Cambodian jungle. Others say the creature is nothing but a rhinoceros, and the bony back plates are simply a coincidence. Miniature Coffins In 1836, Scottish schoolchildren stumbled upon a mystery that still hasn't been solved almost 200 years later. The children were exploring a cave near Edinburgh when they found 17 miniature coffins. Coffins which could be connected to ancient witchcraft, or Satan worship, or perhaps nothing nefarious at all. After all these years, scientists still only have theories for why the coffins were built and who put them in the cave. One of the theories is that they were symbolic burials for brave sailors lost at sea. A more disturbing theory is that the 17 coffins and the tiny bodies inside them were memorials for the victims of serial killers Burke and Hare. Burke and Hare were grave robbers who murdered people in 1828 in Edinburgh. Whatever the case, no one has any confirmed answers. Eight of these small coffins are still around today, currently on display at the National Museum of Scotland. Each coffin contains the miniature figure of a person cut from a piece of wood. They look like tiny voodoo puppets. Their faces are bland and haunting, and each is dressed in a tiny cotton outfit. 12,000-year-old rock art Researchers are baffled by rock carvings found in the Konkan region of western Maharashtra in India. There are five villages in this mysterious region surrounded by bizarre drawings and pictographs that are estimated to be 12,000 years old. There are not just a few pictograms, petroglyphs, or rock drawings in the region. There are thousands, and most of them are still covered by grass and soil. Much of the artwork has been revealed by accident left scratched into the ground by unknown people. Each piece of artwork is unique, displaying everything from birds to people, 
mysterious marine creatures, and curious geometric designs. No one knows who made the petroglyphs, but researchers say it may have been a lost civilization that nobody even knew existed until now. The thing is that whoever lived here drew their pictures on just about every single hill they could find. Surrounding all five modern villages are thousands of drawings, seemingly left behind by the most artistic culture in prehistoric India. They existed approximately around 10,000 BC and were most likely hunters and gatherers. Tejas Garj, director of the Maharashtra State Archaeology Department, says there haven't been any images of farming activities found. Everything depicted here involves animals and the hunt for food. And here's one thing that's truly shocking. Archaeologists uncovered pictures of animals that didn't live anywhere near the region. They found drawings of hippos and rhinos, two species the locals couldn't have possibly seen. How in the world they drew such accurate representations of animals a world away is something that scientists can't figure out. Dumbuck Cranagh In July of 1898, a man named William Donnelly discovered the archaeological site of Dumbuck. He found it while taking a stroll along the north bank of the Firth of Clyde, located on the west coast of Scotland. He noticed a circle of wooden stakes jutting out from some timbers to form a circular platform. It was obviously artificial, and obviously very old. William spent the next few months with a team of researchers and public volunteers investigating the Dunbuck Cranog. Through their excavation, the team discovered a wooden platform, a dock, and a log boat. Clearly, this had once been some sort of artificial island, perhaps a prehistoric town just off the coast. But it was something else that caught the researchers' attention. A small group of unusual objects were scattered around the site. The objects were small stones and shells that had been carved to look like humans, or human-like beings. It was noted they looked extremely out of place, unlike artifacts ever found in the region before. William Donnelly became convinced he had come across tiny statues crafted from a previously unknown civilization. He claimed the objects were at least 2,200 years old while others called him a conspiracy nut. The artifacts were dubbed as forgeries, and William was accused of faking the objects himself to get attention. His reputation was ruined, and the findings were never taken seriously. Because of all the bad press the site got, it never received the kind of attention it should have. After all, this was at the turn of the 20th century. William died prematurely, his son blamed it on the shame of being accused of lying, and the artifacts were tossed aside as a hoax. We still don't know if they really were fake, or if they had been carved by a mysterious civilization. There is a possibility that early archaeologists were too stubborn to even consider the existence of an unknown group of humans. Mysterious Standing Stones a megalithic complex of over 500 standing stones was recently discovered in the south of Spain. Researchers are saying this complex could be one of the largest of its kind in Europe, potentially the biggest collection of standing stones anywhere in the country. Yet somehow archaeologists have missed the site for centuries. These stones were found in Huelva, not far from the Spanish border with Portugal. The entire site spans a whopping 1,500 acres and these stones were only identified because it was being transformed into an avocado plantation. Prior to the avocado permit being granted, regional authorities requested a brief survey. They wanted to make sure there were no archaeological treasures, nothing that could be destroyed by the plantation. And that was when they found the stones. José Antonio Linares from Huelva University says this is the largest collection of standing stones in the Iberian Peninsula. But who built them? When and why? This is what scientists have yet to figure out. These stones may have been aligned in such a way that they capture the sunrise during the summer and winter solstices, as well as the equinoxes in spring and autumn. However, nobody knows how old they are or what mysterious culture built them. These stones are currently being excavated and scientists won't have the work complete until 2026. Rocky Valley Labyrinths the Rocky Valley Labyrinth carvings could be 4,000 years old, but nobody really knows. The carvings can be found north of Tintagel in the UK, hidden in the rural countryside past a waterfall 
beyond a flowing river, and deep inside a beautiful and largely unbothered woodland. At the bottom of the woodland is Rocky Valley, home to an abandoned mill from the 18th century. Near this old and decaying building is a flat rock face with mysterious labyrinth-like designs carved into it. They appear to be turf mazes, which were popular in gardens during the medieval days. There are three main theories when it comes to the carvings. One of them is that they were made about 4,000 years ago. This is because the carvings are quite similar to other images of carvings that have been found in Spain, hundreds of miles away. Another theory is that the carvings are so crisp and clean, they could only have been done with metal tools, which would place them at only about 2,500 years ago. Third, there's speculation the carvings were made by whoever made the mill almost 200 years ago. Unfortunately for everyone, none of the theories have ever been confirmed. Scientists haven't dated the labyrinth, and no one has been able to decipher what their meaning was. Dragon's Breath Cave Dragon's Breath Cave is a spectacular and terrifying place in the African country of Namibia. It was discovered in 1986, deep in the sandy wasteland of the Kalahari Desert. Within this landscape of desert sand and waterless scrublands, the cave is almost invisible. Its entrance is little more than a shadow, a dark and yawning cave mouth that leads down into darkness. The cave earned its unique name because when it was discovered by a team with the South African Speleological Association, they described standing at its mouth like standing in front of the mouth of a dragon. The humid air that gushed out of the cave's opening felt like the sticky exhalation of a fire-breathing beast. Unfortunately, there are no fire-breathing monsters inside the cave. It's mostly water. In such a dry and hot place, it's a bit of a shock to find an unlimited source of water hiding just underneath the surface. After scrambling down into the depths of the cavern for hundreds of feet, there is an underground lake. This lake is so deep that divers have no idea how deep it really is. They've only managed to go about 400 feet down, and still the darkness of the subterranean world stretches on before them. But this place is not devoid of life. It's filled with unique species of catfish, and almost certainly other creatures that have yet to be found. The cave is incredibly difficult to reach in the first place, and then even harder to explore. There could be all kinds of creepy, eyeless creatures hiding in its dark corridors and flooded passages. Haunted Castle Ruins In the year 1303, King Edward I of England was leading a campaign to conquer the Scottish people. He passed through Nairn on his way to battle and stopped to rest at the foggy and mysterious Rate Castle. The castle was built by the Comyn family less than a decade before the king passed through. The king was good friends with the Comyn. Fast forward to 1442 and the Comyn family, now known as the de Rate family, invited the powerful Macintosh clan to their castle for a feast. The two families had been at each other's throats for decades, and the feast was supposedly to resolve the feud over food and wine. But in reality, the Comyn family was planning to murder their dinner guests. The Macintoshes were tipped off about the scheme, went for dinner anyway, but brought concealed weapons underneath their clothing. The dinner erupted in violence when the Comyns pulled out their swords, and what followed was a brutal slaughter. The fighting killed just about everyone in attendance at the dinner, with heavy casualties on both sides. The chief of the Comyn clan blamed his daughter for alerting the Macintoshes and thwarting the attempted assassinations, so he chased her up the castle stairs to her bedroom. As she tried to jump from a window to escape his wrath, he caught her and cut off her hands. It was shortly after this that the castle was abandoned, and today the creepy ruins are supposedly haunted by a girl with no hands. The Temple of the Flayed Lord Archaeologists in Mexico recently uncovered a horrifying temple that was dedicated to the god Chipe Totec. He was the Flayed Lord, god of skinning humans. He sounds like a deity a deranged serial killer might worship, but in reality he was a popular god of the Popoloca indigenous people over a thousand years ago. According to researchers with Mexico's National Institute of Anthropology and History, this was the first time anyone discovered a cult center dedicated to Xipe Totec. Archaeologists uncovered altars, sculptures, and monumental stone figures representing flayed victims and skinned skulls. 
They were all discovered in the state of Puebla, which was occupied by the Popoloca before it was conquered by the Aztec. The Temple of the Flayed Lord was most likely built around the year 1000, and although the god was worshipped by the indigenous people who came before the Aztec, he was absorbed into Aztec mythology. The Aztec associated him with fertility, war, and agriculture. It was only during the spring festival that the Aztec turned to Xipe Totec as their god of violence. The Aztec would hold gladiator combat trials in which sacrificial victims killed one another. They would also tie victims up and shoot them with arrows. Once they were dead, these victims would have their skin peeled off and worn by priests and other ritual participants for days on end. The Mermaid Shrine There is a terrifying place in Fujinomiya, Japan called the Tenshu Kaiusha Shrine. The shrine dates back centuries and is situated in a dark and isolated corner of the woods near Mount Fuji. There is no public transportation that goes to the temple, and it's attended only by the dedicated Shinto order at Fujinomiya. According to the story of the shrine, the mysterious creature kept within its walls was supposedly first seen by Prince Shotoku at Lake Biwa 1400 years ago. The creature told the prince how it had once been a fisherman who trespassed in protected waters and was turned into a hideous beast as punishment. It was mutated into a disgusting, pointy-toothed freak, then forced to live the rest of its life as a gruesome mermaid monster in the lake. The mermaid asked the prince if he could make a shrine to display his body after he had passed, so that it could be a lesson for other fishermen thinking about fishing in sacred waters. The prince founded a temple, displayed the creature's corpse, and its mummified remains are still there today. Whether the creature in the shrine is indeed a cursed mermaid, a bizarre taxidermy creation, or a mutant pulled out of the lake, nobody knows for sure. But whatever it is, its gross body is on showcase for any brave enough to seek it out. Wanted to give a big shout out to Denver Gill and Rissa Crazy Clan for supporting this channel. If you are new here, welcome! And be sure to subscribe if you haven't already! The Haunted Eddington Park Hotel The Eddington Park Hotel in the UK is a luxurious place to spend the night. It's a four-star hotel with approximately 46 rooms, as well as an on-site restaurant, cafeteria, and pool. Its history dates back over 2,000 years. Archaeologists have found evidence of human habitation going back to before the days of Christ. The hotel itself used to be a Roman villa in the days of Roman-occupied Britain. And finally, the hotel was a mansion before it was ever turned into a lodging. There was a manor house standing on the property going back to at least the 12th century prior to the reign of King Henry III. It was around 1509 that Sir Ralph Shirley leased the manor. And over the years, the structure was modernized, rebuilt, and refurbished. The property remained in the Shirley family until 1983, when the structure was handed over to the Isis Hotel Company and turned into a luxury hotel. The Shirley family still owns the land and pretty much the entire surrounding area. The Eddington Park Hotel is considered the most important High Victorian house in all of England. And now for the terrifying part. The ancient house is supposedly haunted by multiple resident ghosts. The spirit of a woman named Lady Emma is notorious for appearing to guests and then disintegrating through the walls. She is believed to be a former governess who died under suspicious circumstances, and her soul refuses to leave the property. People have also witnessed a monk wandering about the grounds, an army officer, and two young Shirley boys who drowned nearby in the early 1800s. Creepy Arkansas There is a creepy hiking trail in Arkansas that takes its visitors straight through the ruins of a mysterious lost village. The trail is within the borders of the Toltec Mounds Archaeological State Park. The park was once home to a group of Native Americans known today as the Plum Bayou Culture. They lived in the area starting around 650 AD and then vanished 400 years later. The group is shrouded in mystery because archaeologists have never been able to trace their origins or figure out what happened to them. Some believe the Plum Bayou culture originated from the Toltec tribes in Mexico, but that's never been confirmed. There are no structures left behind by these people, but there are approximately 18 mounds within the park. These mounds were once used for ritual activity, with flat-topped platforms for feasts, planning, social gatherings, and much more. This would have been a large and impressive complex on par with many other Native American sites across the U.S. 
But it's not the mounds that make the hiking trail so creepy. The village mysteriously disappearing is definitely strange, but it gets even stranger. Visitors have reported hearing phantom footsteps and even seeing floating orbs like concentrations of spirit energy in the park at night. The Meat Eater In Turkey, the Assos Necropolis can be found in the ancient city of Assos. The city was founded around the year 1000 BC by colonists from Lesbos. The settlers constructed a grand temple to Athena on top of a craggy peak in 530 BC. The region prospered, and Assos turned into one of the philosophical centers of the ancient world. Aristotle was married to Pythia here in 348 BC, and everything was going just swell. But then the Persians invaded a few years later, and everything changed. Even after Alexander the Great drove the Persians out in 334 BC, Assos never reclaimed its former glory. It wound up being absorbed by the Roman Empire and just becoming another city lost to history. And yet there is something special about the Assos Necropolis. The stone sarcophagi hiding down in the dark and creepy depths of the graveyard are meat eaters. The sarcophagi have the uncanny ability of devouring a corpse within 40 days flat. Any body buried in the stone sarcophagi will supposedly decompose unnaturally fast, with the skin and meat and muscle practically melting off the bones. As of right now, scientists don't fully understand what causes the bodies to decompose so rapidly. Nobody knows why the stone boxes in this long-lost cemetery can quite literally eat human flesh. The research is ongoing, but right now it's still a mystery. The Cave Down Under In July 2022, the deepest newly discovered cave in Australia was named after a variant of the coronavirus. Explorers squeezed their way through unexplored passages and tunnels under the surface of Tasmania. These cavers were with the Southern Tasmanian Caverniers Organization, a brave crew who ventured 1,316 feet deep. It took about 14 hours for the team to explore the subterranean system. The caverns down there are creepy, totally dark, humid, and almost completely out of this world. They came across a waterfall sending cascades of cave water 535 feet into a frothing black pool. It was like something from an alien planet. Ben Armstrong, who was part of the exploration, said it was all very vertical. It required hundreds of feet to be ascended and then descended using ropes. Even though the Delta variant, as the new cave has been called, is the deepest in all of Australia, it's still not the deepest or most terrifying in the world. The deepest known cave is currently Veriovkina Cave in Abkhazia, which descends under the surface 7,257 feet. Medieval Monks with Worms Archaeologists with the Cambridge Archaeological Unit in England recently examined the remains of 19 medieval monks buried at the Pease Hill Augustinian Friary. The friary dates back to the 11th century, and the medieval monks were found to have been riddled with worms. The researchers extracted soil samples from around the pelvises of the skeletons. What they found inside the soil was the remains of worms and larvae. 58% of the monks were infected with worms, which was extraordinarily high when compared to the local townsfolk in Cambridge. When the team took similar soil samples from people buried in the nearby town, they found only 32% of the locals to be infected with worms. This was highly unexpected because monks should have had better access to washing facilities than peasants. Monks at a monastery usually had latrines and running water, whereas commoners buried their waste in holes in the backyard. So why were medieval monks at this friary so filthy? The main theory is that it's because they used human waste as fertilizer for their vegetables. The monks may have had access to cleaning facilities, but they likely handled their own waste much more than ordinary peasants. They use their waste as fertilizer, so worm larvae were transferred to vegetables and eaten by the monks. This led to repeated parasitic infections, which is why most of the monks buried in the cemetery had suffered from worms almost all their lives. Disturbing Tomb Marker Archaeologists discovered the grave marker of a man named Jacob while they were excavating the Beit Shearim Cemetery in Israel. The necropolis is a UNESCO World Heritage Site dating back over 1,800 years. It also contains the bodies of some of the first people to convert to Judaism. Jacob's grave was not found, only his grave marker. 
Researchers say his tombstone had most likely been separated from his grave during a looting expedition by grave robbers. His final resting place is unknown, but that might be for the best. His gravestone was discovered with a ghoulish message on it, one warning everyone to stay away from his final resting place. The grave marker has his name clearly written in what appears to be blood. He was known during his life as Jacob the Proselyte, and he had recently converted to Judaism. The rest of the message on his tombstone reads, Any who open this grave will be cursed. Clearly, Jacob didn't want anyone messing with his bones after he was gone. He even went out of his way to paint the message in red to mimic blood. Thanks for watching! Which of these creepy places would you love to visit for yourself? Serpent Worship in Kerala In India, the hooded serpent is known as the Naga or the Sarpam, and it's worshipped in just about every part of the country. Serpents were seen as demigods in the ancient world, deities who have been revered for thousands of years. Even these days, many people of the Hindu faith will turn to the Naga in times of desperate need, praying for rain, praying against famine, and offering whatever goods they have to appease the serpents. One of the places where serpent worship has been prominent for centuries is Kerala. It's here where there are incredible mysterious places called Sarpa Kavus or serpent groves. Each one of these groves is presided over by a family of the Hindu faith, a kind of guardian family which takes care of the lights, the trees, and the lamps. These groves are ancient places where not even a single branch is allowed to be snapped and where no living thing may die. If a snake were to be killed inside one of these groves, those responsible would be cursed. There are other mystical groves like this across the subcontinent. They are typically dedicated to animal gods, while others are found dedicated to the mother goddess or dedicated to male gods. Rare Gladiator Tombs in Turkey, archaeologists were excavating the ancient city of Anavarza when they came across rare gladiator tombs. These were the tombs used to bury the physical remains of men who fought bravely in gladiatorial disputes roughly 2,000 years ago. Anavarza itself was once a thriving city occupied by the Greeks, the Romans, the Sassanids, and lastly the Ottomans before being completely abandoned. Today, it's nothing but a few crumbling structures sheltered by rock bluffs, with the whole city in ruins and grown over by desert shrubs. The gladiator tombs were found at the southern part of the city, near the ruins of an ancient amphitheater. According to the excavation team, including Dr. Faith Gulson from Kukurova University, the amphitheater was used to host battles, festivals, water sports, and other public games. It wasn't only blood and death but was used in all manner of fun and sport. It's not exactly clear yet how the gladiators died. We don't know if they were slaughtered during a fight, if they died from sickness, or if they were retired fighters who died of natural causes. But seeing as there is a whole necropolis filled with the skeletons of gladiators, we can assume they most likely died fighting. We won't know for sure until researchers finish analyzing the bones. Leap Castle Leap Castle is considered by some to be the most haunted castle in the entire world. It's a majestic manor house, crumbling from the days of ancient Ireland, located in County Offaly. It's been there for over 700 years, built in the 13th century by the O'Bannon clan. 200 years later, it was taken violently and with a lot of spilled blood, and then became the seat of the O'Carroll clan and what came after was even more blood and brutality. The castle was passed from father to son, punctuated here and there by murders and betrayal. Then, in the 17th century, the Darby family took over ownership of the castle. The castle changed hands a few more times up until the 20th century, and then, in 1922, it was burned to the ground. For too long, it had been in the hands of those who swore their allegiance to the British crown, and a group of pitchfork-wielding Irish took their anger out on the fortress. After all the death and destruction that's gone on here, Leap Castle allegedly became plagued by spirits. People claim to witness ghosts on the grounds. They claim there's poltergeist activity and say the burnt-out husk of the bloody chapel is the most haunted part of all. Ulukak Mound There is a strange and very ancient place in Turkey called the Ulukak Mound. It can be found in Anatolia, 
and it dates back roughly 8,850 years. The mound has been under constant excavation since the mid-1990s, and archaeologists are always finding new and impressive things. For example, one of the most recent discoveries was a clay statuette, a small female figurine that is 7,800 years old. It was a very rare find and is revealing some unusual insights into the rituals of life and death practiced by these early humans. The figurine was likely used in fertility rituals. Other figurines like it have been found before, but usually in prehistoric garbage dumps. This has already led researchers to believe the figurines weren't sacred objects, but used at special religious events and then thrown away after. According to archaeologists at the Ulukak Mound now, the figurine may have been used in rituals surrounding birth and death, and may have been some kind of magic totem. Unfortunately, it's not easy to look at a piece of clay nearly 10,000 years old and understand everything about it, especially when it comes from such a mysterious site as this. The Ulukak Mound was originally a settlement, a place that hosted the very first farmers in the region. The first settlers here were some of the first people in the world to build houses, stacking them on top of each other nearly 25 feet tall. They lived for 1,200 years in this place without interruption, and then faded with history, leaving behind valuable traces of their existence. The Valley of Death for Birds The small village of Jatinga in India is nicknamed the Valley of Death. It's in the northeastern state of Assam, surrounded on all sides by scenic mountains. It's a beautiful place, but one that's synonymous with death and mystery. A natural phenomenon occurs in this mountain valley that sees countless birds die every single year. There is a narrow strip of land occupied by about 2,500 people, and it seems to beckon birds to their doom. It usually starts in September, right after the monsoon season, on a dark and moonless night. 44 species of bird that live in the area become confused and disturbed between 7 and 10 in the evening. They grow disoriented, plunge toward the lights of the city, crash to the ground, and die. Now here's where things get really strange. The villagers have believed for centuries that the birds are spirits being released from the sky to terrorize them. And so, the birds that don't smash into the ground themselves are slapped out of the sky with bamboo poles and then beaten. Despite the massacre every year, the birds keep crashing into the village. Scientists believe it's an unusual combination of high winds, deadly fog, and high altitude. The birds get distracted, the bright lights of the village confuse them, and then they plummet to their doom. Wildlife activists have gone to the village to educate the people to try and stop the mass killings of the birds, and there has been a decrease in deaths of 40%. But that hasn't stopped the birds from falling into death spirals over the town every year. Can you think of any other explanations as to why the birds might do this? Let me know in the comments below, and be sure to subscribe if you haven't already. Solly Abbey Solly Abbey is a strange and spooky place one that has seen its share of violence. It was originally an abbey of Cistercian monks in the tiny English village of Sali, starting around the year 1147. But when King Henry VIII came to power and started making some really odd decisions, Sali Abbey went from being a holy place to one of screams and torture. The chief sponsor of the abbey was William de Percy II, the son of a feudal baron whose family controlled massive amounts of land in England. Monks quickly came to occupy the abbey. They started their own tanning operation, and religious scholars spent time here working on one project or another, all up until 1536. That was when Henry VIII broke away from the Roman Catholic Church to start his own church, the Church of England. He disbanded all friaries, priories, convents, and monasteries throughout England, Wales, and Ireland. He was abolishing all traces of the Roman Catholic Church. And so, all the monks at Sully Abbey were kicked out. Shortly after, there was an uprising called the Pilgrimage of Grace. This was when the monks and nuns all tried to go back to their religious centers. Several monks tried to return to Sully Abbey, but King Henry heard about it and was furious. He had a whole team go there, then executed the monks for treason. 
and that was the last time Solly Abbey was ever occupied. The Impossible Rocks Near the eastern coast of Africa is a place called Anjuan Island. It's a small island made of dark volcanic rock. Instead of white sandy beaches, the shoreline is littered with hard volcanic stones. It's a mysterious place far from any tourist trail, where the locals live a more sedentary and stress-free kind of lifestyle. Recently, researchers found a collection of what they've called impossible rocks on a ridge line of the island. These strange rocks are made out of quartzite, which can only be made from sandstone. This is a conundrum because, like I said before, the entire island is made of volcanic rock. Quartzite shouldn't be found anywhere near this island, as it's usually formed in a riverbed or a delta. According to geochemist Cornelia Klass, the large blocks of quartzite found on the island don't look like anything that could have been formed there naturally. But how did these weird rocks make it to this remote island? In 2018, Cornelia Klass led an expedition to find the answer. Cornelia and her team quickly found a mother load of quartzite, confirming the bulk of the stuff to be centered near a mountain village called Sembehu, built alongside volcanic slopes. This suggests the quartzite was in the ground, in the middle of the ocean basin off the coast of Africa, and was pushed up when volcanic activity formed the island. The quartzite was brought up from deep in the ground over 13,120 feet from the seabed. It goes to show just how crazy our planet is and how dramatically the landscape shifts over time. Yerbas Buenas Petroglyphs In a desert in the country of Chile, there is a site not frequented by many tourists, and yet it boasts an incredible historical significance. These are the Yerbas Buenas Petroglyphs, found in San Pedro de Atacama. And while the area is indeed a hub for tourism, with popular places like salt lakes, natural geysers, historical cities, and ancient ruins, the petroglyphs are often missed. Yet they give a glimpse into the ancient history of Chile in a way these other places don't. It's because the petroglyphs feature hundreds and hundreds of strange and curious drawings. Based on the petroglyphs alone, Researchers know herders, traders, and travelers used the place as a kind of rest stop for many centuries. The area was used for so long that the artistic style of the petroglyphs changed at least four times. There are four distinct phases, showing how even artistic expression in a small desert changes rapidly with human innovation. Etched onto the walls are mainly llamas. There are small llamas, pregnant llamas, herds of llamas, and then a few other random animals, flamingos and a singular monkey. The monkey is one of the most mysterious drawings of all because there are no monkeys in this part of Chile. They are typically in the Amazon jungle, which suggests whoever drew the monkey had traveled a significant distance. Sadly, we don't know exactly how old these petroglyphs are. They likely date back over a thousand years, maybe even two or three thousand years. They represent part of an old trading route, one that may have gone all the way from Patagonia up to the Amazon basin and maybe even deeper into the jungle. China's Unusual Pyramids In China's Shanxi province, there are dozens of pyramids found in the old capital of Tian, along with dozens more scattered around other parts of the country. China has over 40 pyramids. The biggest difference between China's pyramids and the ones in Egypt is that in China, the pyramids are made of earth and dirt. They look more like mountains these days, huge mounds that are pyramid-shaped but covered entirely in grass. Plus, China keeps their pyramids relatively secret, not advertising them, and almost entirely ignoring their archaeological value. The tallest of the pyramids in Shanxi once stood 249 feet tall. It was made for the first emperor in Lingtong. Most of the Chinese pyramids almost certainly belong to emperors. For example, the mausoleum of Qin Shi Huang, the first emperor of China who was buried with his army of terracotta warriors, was hidden underneath a pyramid. It's just not nearly as impressive or awe-inspiring as other pyramids around the world because it was made of earth, meaning it's kind of deflated over the centuries. In 2002, CNN reported on a mysterious pyramid thousands of miles southwest of Qian 
that local legends claimed was once a launch tower especially designed for alien spacecraft. Grange Stone Circle The Grange Stone Circle of Loch Gur is the largest stone circle in all of Ireland. It's sitting beside a major roadway in County Limerick, passed over nonchalantly by people driving to work every day. There are no barriers around the archaeological site. You can stroll right in from the side of the road, and it's one of the most important places in the whole country. It's a national monument of 113 standing stones, erected in an almost perfect circle 150 feet in diameter. The Grange Stone Circle of Loch Gur is the Irish version of Stonehenge. It was built around the same time, during the Neolithic period, though it hasn't been studied nearly as much as Stonehenge. For this reason, we don't have the exact dates of construction. What we do know is that the entrance was made to align with the rising sun during the summer solstice. We also know that researchers excavated the stone circle in 1939 and found animal bones and broken pots. For that reason, it's always been assumed the circle was used for sacred rituals, perhaps rituals involving the sacrificial slaughter of animals. Thanks for watching! Which of these mysterious places would you love to visit? Let me know in the comments below and be sure to hit that subscribe button if you haven't already. See you soon. Bye.